Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, November 28th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. One issue I probably should have covered yesterday, but uh, well, I sort of ran out of time, is three vulnerabilities in OwnCloud. OwnCloud is an open source file sharing system. It does have sort of a commercial component to it. And OwnCloud did on November 21st, so just last week, release an update that fixes three critical vulnerabilities, one of which we already see being exploited in our sensors. The one that's already exploited is also the one that's the most severe of the vulnerabilities. That's CVE 2023-49103, CVSS score of 10, and it does, yes, allow arbitrary code execution as administrator, appears to be most critical or most severe uh, if it, it you, the own cloud uh, install is running inside a container. The problem here is that the Craft API library that is installed uh, with uh, own cloud does provide some test scripts that uh, remained on the system and one of them gets you access to PHP info. If you're familiar with PHP, PHP info is often used for debugging. It's a command that sort of dumps the entire system configuration, including in this case, usernames and passwords for administrator. Also things like API keys, in particular if you're connecting to something like S3 with own cloud and uh, mail server credentials and the like. The second vulnerability, CVE 2023-49105, does allow the arbitrary modification and deletion of files if any of your users has no signing key configured. And that's the default if you just set up a new user. The last vulnerability, still with a CVSS score of uh, 9, so uh, still uh, certainly uh, critical, is a subdomain validation bypass in the OAuth 2 app. This allows for basically defining uh, some invalid uh, or out of scope redirect URLs. So this way an attacker could trick a victim into providing them with OAuth credentials. The Craft API vulnerability is the one that you really should worry about. You can actually just fix it by removing that uh, PHP info file. That's sort of the recommended uh, patch here in this case. This vulnerability is already being exploited at this point, you should assume compromise if you come across an own cloud server that's exposed to the internet and still vulnerable to this particular exploit. Another sort of cleanup item from last week is a paper by Blackwing Intelligence uh, from Jesse Duaguano and uh, Timo Teres. In this paper, uh, the two researchers outline attacks against fingerprint sensors used in Windows Hello laptops. Windows Hello is the login standard that Microsoft created to allow you to log in with things like uh, facial recognition and fingerprint recognition. They're focusing on what they're calling the top three sort of implementations of fingerprint sensors, Dell, Lenovo, and then uh, Microsoft Surface Pro. Just a bit background here, the sensor actually does what's uh, referred to match on chip, which means that the fingerprint sensor itself matches the fingerprint and then sends a signal to the host verifying that the user was authenticated. The problem here, of course, is how does the host know to trust the sensor? How do they prevent the sensor from being replaced? And there is an intricate certificate system set up that ensures the authenticity of the sensor. And these certificates and the communication is supposed to use the Secure Device Connection Protocol or SDCP that essentially verifies these certificates. The 
problem they first uncovered with Dell and Lenovo is that it is possible to actually replace a fingerprint in the sensor. Once you know the user ID of the user you're trying to replace and uh, that's something that can be determined, it's possible to disconnect the sensor from the system and then overwrite a fingerprint with an attacker's fingerprint and that way log in. That again worked for Dell and Lenovo. The real sad part here was Microsoft's own Surface Pro. Unlike specified by Microsoft, it doesn't appear to use the secure device connection protocol, which means it's actually possible just to replace the fingerprint sensor with an arbitrary USB device that just advertises the right uh, vendor IDs. And as a result, it's then possible to just basically fake the match signal and log in. This particular work was actually requested by Microsoft, so that's not sort of a random researcher who just came up with it. And of course, the results were shared with Microsoft, so hopefully there is a fix on the way for these weaknesses in the implementation. The researchers also intend to extend their work to other operating systems like Android and uh, Mac OS, uh, iOS. So we'll see what they find there. I know that uh, iOS uh, for its face ID and also for its fingerprint sensors in Mac OS uses sort of uh, similar ideas as you have here in Windows Hello. So there's a possibility that there are also similar problems. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.